I'm really stoked to look into this because I know this was in the news. I know this happened this past weekend, but I did not hear anything about it until right now. So I'm seeing this headline for the first time. Let's go to it. Doing Venezuela benefits uh, vie over talent and the country's fate. All right, so I knew there was there were some concerts going on uh, near the border. That's all I knew. I didn't really know the details. So let's see what happened this past weekend. Uh, David shares this. Venezuela aid live organizer Richard Branson and Latin pop performers defend their all-star benefit in the face of a rival of a rival government back big gig and harsh criticism from Roger Waters. Roger Waters of uh, Pink Floyd, who has been very critical of what's going on in Venezuela, very outspoken uh, about Israel-Palestine. Uh, Roger Waters is, uh, uh, oh, and very outspoken for Julian Assange. Roger Waters uh, has some uh, pretty cool things to say. All right, so ever since George Harrison's two concerts for Bangladesh in 1971, charity concerts have been a pop music staple. Most have been straightforward in their goals of relieving suffering at a particular spot on the globe, but rarely have pop benefits been as complicated as the two dueling concerts for Venezuela scheduled for this weekend, which pit country against country and even Roger Waters against one of the organizers. Interesting. Okay, so let's see the details. Venezuela is unquestionably in the midst of a crisis. Hyperinflation, food shortages, and a government crackdown have resulted in in a mass and ongoing exodus. And last month, Juan Guaido, head of the National Assembly, declared himself the interim head of state. Nicolas Maduro had been sworn in. In light of alleged election tampering, Maduro's legitimacy had been questioned, especially by dozens of other nations, including the U.S. I mean, not everybody can have elections as honest as the United States of America. (laughs) Not everyone can have elections as good as ours. I mean, really. Like our, like our election system, it's flawless. You never hear about anything going wrong. Never, right? It's never happened. Has it? I'm sure it had. Of course not. All right. So far, Maduro has remained in power and retained control over the military, and his government has insisted that the country is not melting down and does not need foreign aid. He has even used the military to block ports and bridges that would be pipelines for any supplies. So the so this troubling scenario is the backdrop of Venezuela Aid Live, a benefit show that will take place uh, today. So what was the date on this? So this is from February 22nd. So this happened over the weekend. Near a bridge in the Colombian town of Cucuta, which borders on Venezuela. Organized by Virgin Group founder, entrepreneur, and philanthropist Rancher Branson, the event, with a title that intentionally recalls the 1985 Live Aid show, will feature nearly three dozen Latin music acts, including veteran and Grammy win- winner Alejandro Sanz, Puerto Rican ballader Luis Fonsi, Colombian superstar Wands, and many others. Um, and then there's other people that are going to be on the show. Making matters a little more confusing, Maduro's government announced a hands-off Venezuela concert to take place on the other side of that same bridge. Although it is also set for today with the second show Saturday, no acts have yet been announced. Um, And some people are speculating that Maduro might perform. So Branson, who says he has known quite a few Venezuelans, says he was inspired to organize Venezuela Aid Live by those connections. They are in pain seeing their country go from being the most successful in South America to one that's in abject poverty. This is Richard Branson speaking. I'm fortunate that I can pick up the telephone and get through to anyone in the world and get resources. Uh, so, R- Richard Branson's kind of an off-putting guy. Uh, we all know that about him. Uh, Branson says the goal of the multiple-hour show will be to raise $100 million for food and medicine for Venezuelans who need them and pressure the military into letting them be distributed. Okay. If you've got cancer or diabetes, there are no medicines left. The whole idea of the concert is to persuade the soldiers to do what's right. Earlier this week, Waters openly criticized Branson, asserting the benefit has nothing to do with humanitarian aid at all. It has to do with Richard Branson having bought the U.S. saying, we've decided to take over Venezuela for whatever our reasons may be. Do we really want Venezuela to turn into another Iraq or Syria or Libya? I don't and neither do the Venezuelan people. In response, Branson said he's a good musician. Uh, This is Richard Branson referring to Roger Waters. 
But he honestly doesn't know what's going on in the world. He said Venezuelans were not suffering, and yet every single international organization has condemned the election and people are suffering. I'm afraid he's blind to what's going on in Venezuela. As to what he would like to see happen in the country, Branson said, I would like to see free and fair elections monitored by the international community that can put a government in charge that can make Venezuela great again and make it the number one country in South America again. With the right leadership, that can happen. This is Richard Branson speaking. Asked about Waters' comments, Alejandro Sanz at first laughs. I think they spent a lot of time in the 70s. But Sanz soon turns more somber. It would be great if these people who criticize what we have been doing would at least for a year not live in a big mansion but with people. Then they can form an opinion. Okay. So I'm not familiar with this Alejandro Sanz person, but... All right, I guess that's their take on it. Um, Sanz isn't alone in openly condemning Maduro. I'm not normally a political person, but this is a humanitarian problem. Hopefully it will get better. What would help would be for the president to leave. He's a dictator. As a Colombian, I experienced the Venezuelan drama up close. I think it's time for the people to regain their freedom and stability. Sanz, who was born in Spain, has his own tangled history with Venezuela. In 2004, Sanz commented on the way then-President Hugo Chavez was interfering with a recall referendum on his election, and Sanz later accused the government of sabotaging two of his concerts in that country by making it impossible for his crew to book hotels. Of Bronson's efforts, Sanz says, first and foremost, the goal, their goal is humanitarian aid to enter the country, then becomes unapologetically political as well. The second thing is that the Venezuelan army finally comes to the aid and takes the side of Guaido, and takes the oppressor out of the country. So this is typically not what concerts like that are supposed to do. So now I see where this conflict comes from, as in the the two competing concerts. Typically, concerts like this um, aren't supposed to take a side like that. Their side is supposed to be, look, we're just here to help. We just want a peaceful resolution. We just want to help. They typically, um, at least in verbiage, are not supposed to quote-unquote take sides. So in this particular, for instance, they wouldn't be siding, you know, when you kind of have, you know, a, a, a civil conflict, they would not necessarily take a side in this case. You know, regardless how you feel about how that conflict started, regardless of the players involved, regardless of, you know, it's an illegal coup that the United States backed, regardless of all that, in this particular case, when you're putting on a concert to help the citizens, you typically would not see that concert taking a side. They would just be like, look, we just want a peaceful resolution. The musicians should would certainly have their opinions. And some may feel like Roger Waters does. Some may feel like um, like that other musician in the article. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not familiar with them. But um, you you will have that. Musicians will have opinions. Some musicians may have different opinions than others. But the concert itself would not have an agenda for one side or the other. Um, I feel like that's what you would expect in a situation like this. But that's not like the like they're calling for military action. So that's a little, that's a little atypical, and you know, not in a good way. So, so I see why Roger Waters was not, you know, not in favor. All right. So, but at least for this weekend. All right. So Branson says he is in the early stages of another Venezuela aid live. This time in Miami with bigger international artists. But at least for this weekend, Branson is focused on Venezuela Aid Live. It should be a joyous occasion, he says. It's going to be raw, since things will be raw if you only have a few weeks to plan. But we hope that with music and a little bit of love, we can help get supplies over. Whether we will succeed or not, we'll see. Okay, well, if your goal is just to help the people that live there, say that. You know, that that's totally fine if a concert just wants to help people. If a concert's just like, we just want to help people, we just want to raise resources for them, you know, we're going to be doing whatever, and that's it. Um, but if your goal is to, you know, side with Juan Guaido and, and calling for the military to then turn against the... Well, I can see why 
there is a lot of opposition to that. So, well, and let's see if there's any updates here, because this was written a couple days ago, and I'm not seeing any updates. Yeah, I'm not finding any updates. If, if anyone has any updates more recent than that, please do tweet it over. I'm not, I'm not seeing any. So I'd be curious to know what happened. I'd be curious to know, like, uh, where the turnouts landed. But yeah. All right. I guess that's all we know so far. So here's something else music-related, music-adjacent, uh, and also Venezuela-adjacent. Boots Riley had some things to say. So Boots Riley finishes an incendiary Venezuela-centered Spirit Award speech backstage. So this was uh, this was for the um, Independent Spirit Awards, Film Independent Spirit Awards. At Saturday's award ceremony, the Sorry to Bother You director, Boots Riley, uh, decried potential intervention in the South American country. When Boots Riley won the Film Independent Spirit Award for the best first feature on Saturday, he closed his exemption speech with an impassioned plea to pay attention to the unfolding tension currently happening in Venezuela. Nicolas Maduro, currently Venezuelan's president, is under international press pressure to lift restrictions on resources into the country. The border between Venezuela and Colombia have been closed, signaling that further escalation may be imminent. While the ceremony cut Riley off before he could finish his speech, the director expanded on his sentiments backstage. To assemble press, here's what Riley said. Obviously, the CIA, every time they targeted a country for regime change, they tell you the same things. They tell you the same things in Iraq. They tell you the same things they did in Chile in 1973. They all say they've lost support. Their dictators were just helping people. We know. Come on. Everybody knows that's not true. Right now, under the guise of humanitarian aid, they're doing the same thing the U.S. did in Guatemala in the 80s, which was sneak guns to right-wing forces in Central America through what they call humanitarian aid. Now, when the Russians were trying to get humanitarian aid into Ukraine a few years ago, the MSM out here correctly said, oh, we know they're sneaking guns in that way. All of a sudden, no one's saying the same thing in the mainstream media. The people of Venezuela are the ones who should be deciding who rules them. The U.S. has been working with opposition forces there for years. Riley went on to discuss how that message connects to Sorry to Bother You, a film that is not shy about its strong political underpinnings. Growing up, I got involved in a lot of movements that showed me that all the struggles that we're talking about are related to material things and the things we can actually change and that the root of our power has to do with what we're doing every day, which is creating profit for someone, Riley said. We can have power react to us by stopping that through organizing on the job and having movements that use withholding of labor as a tactic and a strategy for social change. Those are the things I've learned and those are in that movie. So there you go, Boots Riley. Uh, making some pretty good points on Venezuela. And that's why, again, and we can connect this to the first thing we talked about. If you're going to have a benefit concert for the people, it should just be a benefit concert for the people. You shouldn't then say, and we hope the military... No, no, no. No, no, no. You want to have a benefit to help people, you do just that. You know, you, you the musicians involved can state their opinions. Some might feel like Roger Waters and Boots Riley. Some may feel differently. But, you know, you kind of, the correct thing to do in that situation would uh, take the humanitarian approach to the people. And he voices the concerns that many share in regards to the U.S.-backed aid. <laughs> so, thank you, Boots Riley. Get your news on with Ron, don't you want to know what's going on? We're getting our news on today. Get your news on with Ron, don't you want to know what's going on? We're getting our news on today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can tweet me an article at Ron Placone. We'll go through it together and make it our own. Get your news on.